So again, this is Junior Roberts with real juniorroberts.com. We're on to question two of the 2019 CSEC Physics January paper, right? Uh, I've done question one in a previous video. I will list it and link it below in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check it out. Okay, so let's go right into, the, into this video. So question two says, we are to state the factor on which each of the following characteristics of sound depend. And so in this case, where we're considering pitch, uh, the factor that uh, the pitch of a sound is dependent on is the frequency, All right? So the pitch of the sound will depend on the frequency of that sound wave right now loudness is dependent on the amplitude of that sound wave right because um the higher the amplitude the more energy is being transferred and if we're transferring more energy it simply means then that the sound will be louder right so the loudness is dependent on the amplitude and the pitch is dependent on the frequency all right, so that's how we get your two marks there. Now, part B in question two says that a sound wave completes three cycles in six milliseconds, and we're supposed to calculate um, its frequency. Now, we're given the amount of cycles. We're told that it's three cycles, and they all occur in six milliseconds. Right, so at this point, we can actually determine uh, the time taken for complete one of those three cycles. So to do that, we will simply divide uh, the time taken for the total number of cycles divided by the number of cycles. And in this case, uh, the time is actually six milliseconds, and the number of cycles, number of cycles, is three. Right, so so the time let's call that t for one cycle is equal to the time for comp to complete all the cycles, which is six milliseconds, divided by the number of cycles, which is three. Right, so when we divide six by three, we get two milli six milliseconds by three, we get two milliseconds. So this is the time to complete one oscillation. Right, now we know about period of a waveform which is the time taken to complete one oscillation so right now what we have found right here is the period so the period is two milliseconds but we're actually interested in finding the frequency right but we know that the frequency and the period are related in such a way that the period is the inverse of the frequency so we can write that mathematically as t which is our period is equal to the inverse of frequency, which is 1 divided by the frequency. So, since we're actually trying to find frequency, we can transpose this formula. When we do so, we'll get that frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period. So, we can simply find the frequency, frequency now by just plugging in our formula, plugging the values in our formula. So, we go 1 divided by the period, which is 2 milliseconds, and we can use our calculator. So if we say 1 divided by 2, and again, it's milliseconds. So on a milli again is 1 over 1,000. So we can write this as 2 express to the minus 3, right, which is 2 milliseconds. And then we divide that, we get 5 hundred and the unit of frequency is the earth all right so this is our answer here the frequency is 500 hertz okay so now let's look at part c of question two and part c says figure two shows the side a b of a rectangular glass block and c d which is the normal at the point o now, we're told that on figure 2, we should draw the path taken by a ray of light which meets the glass air boundary at 
the point O at an angle of incidence equal to the critical angle. Now, to do this, we need to be aware of what is meant by the critical angle. All right, so the critical angle of uh, any boundary, or well, the critical angle of any medium is that angle such that if light is incidented on that object at that angle, so, um, when the light meets that boundary on one side of the object at that cer certain angle, which is a critical angle, then you won't have an emerging ray on the other side of the object. Right? So, to do this, we will simply draw uh, the lines as they have requested us. So, this would be our emerging ray. Right? It in the boundary. Right, so this is our emerging ray, our incident ray actually. So our incident ray, right? And what will happen is that uh, the ray will be refracted on the surface, right? And again, this is due to the fact that the ray will not emerge on the other side of the glass, right? So it will be incident, this is our incident ray. Ray, right, and this is our emerging ray. So in the air, we won't get um, we won't see this ray emerging on this side of the object. It will, it will all be refracted on the surface of that uh, medium. In this case, the glass, right. So further, the question says we should label the incident ray, right, the critical angle and the refracted ray. This is our refracted ray, which is our emerging ray, right? So the angle, the critical angle, will be between the incident ray and the perpendicular normal. So this here will be our critical angle. Right, and this emerging ray is actually our refracted ray, right? So the next part in the question now says, the glass block has a refractive index of 1.5 and we're supposed to determine the value of the critical angle of the glass. All right? Now, the refractive index, and let's call that N for refractive index. Index. And C, our critical angle. are related by this formula where we say that n or refractive index is equal to 1 upon sine of our critical angle All right so using this formula here we can actually determine the value for the critical angle All right so let's first transpose this formula when we transpose this formula we'll get that sine c is equal to 1 divided by n All right so Let's go ahead and uh, solve this. So we say sine c is equal to 1 divided by n. So let's get out a calculator. And again, let me just write that in. 1 divided by n is 1.5. 1.5. So we use our calculator. And we'll say 1 divided by 1.5 is 0 0.667. Right? So... Therefore, sine c is equal to 0 0.667. Now, but we're interested in finding c, which is our critical angle. So we'll have to take the inverse sine or the arc sine of both sides. So we'll say sine inverse of sine c is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.067. All right? Well, at zero point zero point six six seven six six seven. All right. So, when we take the inverse sine of sine c, inverse sine will cancel our sine. So we're left with c is equal to sine inverse of zero point six six seven. All right. And then we can pull out our calculator.
All right, so we pull out our calculator and then we'll say sine inverse of 0 0.667 gives us an answer of 41.84. So 41.84 degrees. So the value of our critical angle is 41.84 degrees. Right? So C is 41.84 degrees. Okay, so now let's move on to the final part of question two, where it says that the ray of light now meets the glass air boundary at the point O at an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. Right? And and on figure three, we're supposed to draw a diagram to show the new part taken by the ray of light. Now when whenever uh light is incident on a object, right, in such a way that the angle of incidence is greater than that of the critical angle, right, an interesting phenomenon occurs, right? What will happen is that um, the incidented ray will not exit on the opposite side of the boundary. What will happen is, and it will not, uh, and it will not be uh, refracted along the surface. What will happen is that uh, we will have total internal reflection in which all of the light is reflected back in the medium. Right? So let me use the, the diagram here to illustrate this. So when we have uh, the angle or the light being incidented on the boundary at point O, right? Uh, at an angle, let's let's determine the angle. At an angle greater. Right, so the angle here, theta, is greater than 40, let's say 42, right, 42 degrees. Previously, we determined the critical angle as 41 point, let's just look at, look back at the calculator, was 41.8, right, so we can see that the angle is greater than 42 degrees. What will happen is that uh, we'll have a condition called total internal reflection in which all of the light will be reflected inside the medium right so we'll have our emerging ray or, or we'll have our incident ray going at the boundary and then all of the light is reflected inside the medium right so this is our emerge incident ray right and this is our refracted ray right so we end up with a condition called total internal reflection and that occurs when the critical angle well angle of incidence let me just write it properly that occurs when the angle let me write it right here angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle In this case, we end up with total internal reflection. Alright, so this is our uh, question two. If there was any questions in this video or anything that um, I might have covered that you're not so clear on, please post it in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to you. Like this video if it was helpful. Share so others might benefit. Hit subscribe if you have not yet subscribed uh, and thank you for watching.